Some video games have incredible maps, great levels, great battlegrounds, and some don't. Or, you know, maybe the whole game is great, and then there's that one map that's just the worst. That's what we're about to talk about. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 of the most hated maps in video games. Starting off with number 10's Border Crossing from Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2's 2022 reboot. I don't know, it's similar to Modern Warfare 2, but it's also the second in the reboot series. Whatever. The Call of Duty franchise has had some pretty abysmal multiplayer maps. There's plenty you could talk about, but let's start off with one of the most recent. Uh, it's also one of the most hated. People were pretty cold on a lot of the rebooted Modern Warfare's maps, and while players are more positive about Modern Warfare 2's selection, one map that's almost universally disliked is the Santa Sena border crossing map. Uh, just looking at it, you can probably see the issue. It's a bunch of cars. Uh, honestly, barely looks like a map, right? For a series known for having carefully designed lane-based maps, it's pretty shoddy. The whole map is just a minefield of exploding cars and kill lanes. Like, there's so many cars you can use uh, as cover, and it makes anyone who stands out in the open at all just a really easy target. And it's just not particularly competitive, even. It's just kind of you do one thing, you die, you don't, and you don't die. But also, when you don't do it, nothing moves. Enemies deployed a until somebody does it, in which case the thing moves a bit. It's not put together well, particularly for pacing in a multiplayer match. And the thing about it is there's a reason for it. It's not a real map. It's just a chunk out of a ground war map. That's all it is. It doesn't seem like a multiplayer map because it's not. It's a small chunk of a much larger map. The map is so disliked by the community, they drastically lowered its appearance in the rotation as of season two, which good riddance. And number nine is Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Asgard. Uh, we're not just talking about multiplayer maps, obviously. Anything that could conceivably be described as a map in a game counts. And if I had to single out one element that's almost universally disliked in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, other than its excessive length, is Asgard. As someone who liked the Supernatural DLC from Origins and Odyssey, I was actually pretty excited to see they incorporated it into the main game with Valhalla uh, until I started playing the map. Set in its own area, but only accessible by building the Seer's Hut, you'd think being able to run around Asgard as Odin himself would be pretty exciting, but uh, it's not. And not just not, it's also boring. Like, really, really boring. Part of the problem is that, for the most part, this place is just more of the same. It's got almost no connection to what's happened in the main story, and it's just really hard to care about anything that's happening with the gods of Asgard, especially because it's all framed as a dream your character is having, so... It's kind of a huge big whoop. The interesting thing about this place is that the content really isn't all that much worse than the main game or anything. It's just so disconnected. There's no stakes. There's no reason to care about it at all. And it just kind of seems like a waste of time. Lollygagging, you know? That's good. Draw them closer. And it kind of is, because you don't need to finish it to beat the game. It's one of the few actually optional story things in the game, which makes it feel even more unnecessary. And there's nothing about it that's particularly bad. It actually looks really cool. But that's kind of all it does. It looks cool. At number eight is the Yiga Clan hideout from Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Few things piss people off like a forced stealth section, especially in games that just aren't built for it. Even extremely forgiving ones like this in the Sony Spider-Man games, people just don't want that stuff. And I'm saying this as somebody who doesn't actually particularly hate the Yiga Clan hideout. I don't like it, but I don't hate it. It's a lot of things, but Fun is not something I would directly describe it as. There are elements that are fun for me, but I mean, they do some things that make it painfully irritating. So it's kind of a double whammy of annoying game design. It's a required part of the story. And if you get caught by the Yigas at any time, all the doors lock. And if they hit you even once, it's instant death.
So it's technically possible to kill them before they kill you. So getting caught is mostly a death sentence rather than a certain one. Uh, that doesn't make it fun. These guys move really slow and in very specified patterns. So most of your time in this place is just waiting for them to get through that pattern. And if you want to kill them, I mean, you're really focusing on getting into the correct position in i mean it's such a slow process it's terrible it's a lot of the worst parts of stealth games wrapped into a single area and like i said there's even some small element that i like but that might just be nostalgia in that it's kind of like a nintendo 64 game in a lot of ways it reminds me of a lot of those types of experiences but when you really think about what that is it's because it's slow and limited whereas the rest of breath of the wild is this big open beautiful collage of choices and freedom needless to say I i'm happy there's only one part of the game like this <laughs> And number seven is Cortana from Halo 3, another series with its share of divisive maps. But if I had to pick one that's the most hated, it's probably Cortana from Halo 3. Yeah, there's technically worse levels or even more boring levels, some harder levels that don't really merit the difficulty. But Cortana is one that people don't just find frustrating. They just straight up dislike it. Set on the flood infested covenant capital of high charity, this is the level where Master Chief finally reunites with Cortana. Arbiter will do the same with the elites. Cortana's in there somewhere. A pivotal moment in the story, but not fun as a level. At all. Even a little, just nothing resembles fun here. Dealing with the flood and tight corridors is already a problem, but it's made so much worse by the confusing slime infested layout of the level. You can barely tell where you're going and every step you're being hounded by flood who come at you from all directions all the time. On harder difficulties, it's absolute misery, but even on normal, it's a tedious slog. The walls and ceiling are covered with this annoying spitter flood. Every surface is coated in eggs, which if you shoot it, spawns more flood. Everything in the level is just conspiring to kill you, and when it's not trying to kill you, it's just plain annoying to navigate. Also, it's filled with constant visions from Cortana, which are kind of cool the first time you go through it, but if you're dying a lot or just want to rush through the level, these things stop you dead in your tracks and make the level a lot more tedious than it already was. Halo 3 is a great sequel. Most of the levels are incredibly good, but Cortana is not. It's one of the worst levels in the entire series. And number six is Mission 19 from Devil May Cry 4. Overall, great game. And in general, Devil May Cry games don't have great levels before the last one, but this one's especially lame. All it takes is three words to sum up what's bad about it. Uh, the dice game. Introduced in Mission 6, uh, which also wasn't great, the dice game is a stupid mini game where you have to hit a giant spinning dice with this weird board game thing, I guess. I don't know what you would call this. <laughs> It's just a really annoying gimmick. It's supposed to be an action game, and I, I'm not really here to play shoots and ladders. They do just about everything to make it annoying, too. It goes infinitely if you don't properly hit the yellow or purple square, and you have to go through five separate game fields. You gotta clear them all and refight a boss. Again, Devil May Cry 4 makes you replay the first half of the game again in the second half, which includes all of the boss fights. And it's technically the third time fighting it in the dice game, so you're just blatantly wasting my time. If you know the trick to getting the number you want by rolling the dice, which is to hit when the number you want is at the top, then the game isn't as annoying. It's just regularly slow and annoying. But that doesn't excuse how much this mission stops the game dead in its tracks right before the climax of the game. Most games try to go big for the grand finale, and Devil May Cry 5 had an awesome level before the last, but this one is terrible. At number five is the Maggot Lair from Diablo 2. This game is a beloved classic for a reason, uh, but it still it has its fair share of annoyances. The entire third act, for example, uh, but that's almost too much map for this map-based list, so let's stick with something more specific that I think everybody can agree on, the Maggot Lair. One of the required dungeons of Act 2, the Maggot Lair, contains many of the most annoying elements of Diablo 2, all wrapped up in a single dungeon. For one thing, it's extremely cramped. Uh, that makes it really annoying to to explore co-op. Uh, if you're a necromancer, then your minions constantly get stuck on the environment. Uh, the map is 
windy and confusing and goes on for four floors, and that's way too long for such a miserable place. What really puts this place over the top, though, as the worst, is the enemies. Uh, the stupid lightning enchanted beetles are the absolute worst. Every time you kill them, they release this electric attack that is not possible to avoid, you know, because of the cramped corridor thing. Uh, you're constantly just eating lightning, which drains your life super quick. It's so easy to suddenly die out of nowhere from a random beetle that uh, it, it really makes the fact you're forced to go through these endless dark tunnels the worst. I don't know how many times I can say the worst in this one. It's the worst. It's an awful all around frustrating and just no fun map. And number four is Hourglass from Battlefield 2042. Don't think I forgot about you, Battlefield 2042. Uh, this is one of the most reviled entries in the entire franchise, and it also has one of the series' all-time most hated maps. Plenty I could pick from, but I'm going with Hourglass. Uh, it's one of those maps that conceptually, it looks cool, but the actual experience is kind of just misery. But hey, that's Battlefield 2042 for you, isn't it? This, this map's just basically a giant empty desert with a few skyscrapers in the middle, and that's about it. That and a whole lot of red when a dust storm rolls through. So much of this map is just barren. There's literally nothing for cover, uh, which makes it a sniper's paradise. Great for snipers, terrible for anybody who wants to, you know, play the objectives. When you die, which is gonna be often, then expect it to take 30 to 40 seconds of just running through the middle of nowhere to get back to the fight, and, and you know, that's not even counting the snipers. In general, Battlefield 2042 has a problem with overly spacious maps, but there's usually something to look at here. It's just endless desert. Listen, wandering through the desert in Assassin's Creed Origins can be fun, but that's also Assassin's Creed Origins. There are landmarks and things to see. Much less of that going on here in Battlefield 2042, which is also, uh, you know, we're talking about a multiplayer shooter. You gotta have landmarks, map design. It's gotta make sense. Sand dunes and empty buildings, and not a lot of them. There's some fun to be had if, like, your idea of fun is just camping and sand dunes and racking up easy kills. But those are the only people who are having any fun. Well, that and the vehicle guys who are also racking up tons of easy kills. If you're infantry, though, it sucks. You're screwed. And number three is the Defiled Chalice Dungeons. Uh, the Chalice Dungeons are a cool idea on paper, but I don't think I'm going too far in saying that they're the weakest parts of Bloodborne by far. Sure, they can be helpful for grinding blood echoes, but these procedurally generated mini dungeons mostly just reveal how these games benefit from handcrafted level design and encounters. Normal old Chalice Dungeons can get pretty samey and boring after a while, but the worst of them all are de the Defiled ones which no. this unique chalice, which you have to finish if you want to fight the secret boss of the game and get the platinum trophy. Cut your health bar in half while you're in the dungeon. That's about all it does. Uh, but in this game, that is massive. Enemies constantly knock off 50 to 75% of your health in Bloodborne. So it's common for a single attack to nearly kill you, and now your already meager health bar has been cut in half. That means that now, attacks that would normally two-shot you, now single-shot you. Considering this is a game where all you can do is dodge and there's a key mechanic surrounding absorbing damage, that's a big problem. You don't just have to fight one boss like this either, you gotta take on three, and it sucks so so much. It's the most annoying thing in the game by a country mile, and it's something nobody would ever even bother with, except that if you want to get a platinum, you gotta. The actual level design is nothing to talk about, they're the same old chalice dungeons again, but with so much less health to work with, so it makes what would normally be difficult, but, you know, I guess beatable, into some of the most annoying fights from software has ever created. At number two, Guarma from Red Dead Redemption 2. Like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Red Dead 2 is very long. There's a lot going on in this game, and by chapter five, I think a lot of players are just ready to wrap things up. That's when Rockstar hits you with an extended trip to the island of Guarma. This is still RDR2 we're talking about here, so the quality of all of this stuff is impeccable, but at this point in the game, I think players are just 
ready to get there, you know? And instead, you get what's essentially a bunch of padding. It's a filler arc in the middle of the story, an extended trip to this place that has very little to do with the main plot. It's Hawaii in Persona 5. I don't know why I'm there. Just feels like you're in the way. Guarma slash Hawaii. Almost nothing you do here is mentioned when you finally do get back to America, and you never get a chance to go back to Guarma, so all of Chapter 5 is mostly just an excuse for a little time jump. It's something that could have been easily covered in, you know, a title card, some text on the screen, and most players wouldn't notice or care. Uh, maybe if Guarma was a little better integrated in the regular game, or it felt like there was some point to everything you did there, but by the end, it just feels like a rehash of the Mexico arc from Red Dead 1, but not as good. And finally, number one, the frigid outskirts of Dark Souls 2. Dark Souls 2 is a divisive game, but most people agree that the DLCs were an overall improvement to the game. The new areas they added were more varied and interesting than the base game, and with the exception of this one, part of the final DLC, which isn't just bad, it's more than bad, it's next level terrible in a way that you most almost never see in a major game like this. The frigid outskirts are pathetic. The second you enter the place, you've seen everything it has to offer, which is nothing it's a big shallow snowfield look at this oh no a vision obscuring blizzard that i guess acts as some kind of atmosphere but unfortunately it's only literal atmosphere rather than narrative setting type atmosphere also makes it difficult to navigate uh while you wander around this overly large impenetrable map you get attacked by frozen reindeer look at that guy look at him Good luck actually fighting these things in this visibility. It's practically unplayable. Your vision is just that bad. And then it's literally it. There's a boss and a red phantom, but it's all the same. Just a bunch of snow, and the boss is just fighting two bosses from the DLC at one time, and you're snow blind. Dark Souls 2 sometimes gets unfairly attacked for its level design, at least in my opinion, but uh, there's no defending this place. It is horrific. A couple of bonus ones for you. Baby Park from Mario Kart 8. Uh, let's call this section the love and hate maps, because sure, a lot of people really hate Baby Park from Mario Kart 8, but there's also a lot of people that really like it. The reasons people hate it are the reasons they like it. They're the same thing. It's just whether or not you like what this map is throwing down. It's the most simple and shortest map in the entire game, just a wide loop with a bunch of pickups, uh, no cover, lots of weapons. It's by far the most chaotic and random map of the game. It's just weapon central. Turtle shells and bananas are friggin' everywhere. And depending on who you are, you're gonna either love that or hate it. There is no in between. And our last one for the day, Shipment from Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. Maybe the most infamous map in Call of Duty history for both good and bad reasons. This tiny map was grenade spam central. Every match started with a rain of grenades falling down your heads as you start, and every time somebody died, they drop a grenade from the martyrdom perk, which probably killed you because there's so little room to maneuver here. It is an absolute classic, but the map design is just terrible. The player count's way too high for it, and it's small, very small. It wasn't even meant to ship in the original game, actually. It was a 1v1 split-screen map, but actually ended up as a standard multiplayer map by mistake. So if you ever wondered what they were thinking with this map, now you know. They weren't thinking it was not meant to be a map in the standard multiplayer modes. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. We'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.